What's up everyone? Today we're going to talk about Cybre. Uh, who are they? What do they make? Are they any good? All that jazz. Let's have a look. Now if you're a fan of the channel you'll have seen Cybre at the Taipei Bike Show and the Shanghai Bike Show. Uh, you'll have also heard me talk a bit about them before and seen them on some of the builds I've done these days. But today I thought I'd do like a dedicated video for, about Cybre. Uh, show you some of their products like in the flesh and uh, yeah talk about the history. So Cybre, what are they? Uh, basically, I guess they're a component, like a high-end component manufacturer or high-end component designer, I should say. Uh, they don't own their own factory, but they do design the stuff and then find factories to make it for them. Uh, two of the guys behind Cybre, one of them is like a bike industry vet, my good friend Tommy, and the other one is a young, snappy designer with lots of cool ideas, a guy called Mian Mian. And these two are a good combination because number one, they're both cyclists, so they know what product to make, but one of them knows the more production factory side of things and one of them knows more of the design side of things so that's really cool. Uh, both of these guys especially Tommy I've known Tommy for like five six years like our kids play together with best friends and stuff so uh, if this video is biased it's because of that reason but uh, take everything with a pinch of salt as usual I'm always open and transparent with you guys. Uh, so like I say Tommy he's been a cyclist for years he used to be a mountain biker pretty successful down in the Shenzhen area uh, he then worked for a whole bunch of bike brands in China uh, doing lots of different frame brands and wheel brands etc as well as being a racer himself he's also managed several teams his own several teams as well both amateur and professional teams around asia uh, this year he's running the ferry mongolia team which is a UCI Conti team who were featured in my video back at the Tour of Bingzhou. And the good thing about that is obviously number one, he understands racing. He knows what athletes want from their equipment. But number two, it gives him the awesome test bed for all of his new equipment. So uh, Cybre are a sponsor of the team, but also any of their pre-production stuff, any of the prototypes, they throw onto the team bikes to uh, get some good miles in. Obviously go on the training bike first, and then when he's confident that he goes on the race bike, and so if he's going to put on a race bike on his own team, if the product messes up, his team's results are going to suffer. Uh, yeah, it shows his confidence in the product. So I think that's a really good way to develop products. And uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons I think Cybrain make a good race ready product. Like I say, lots of the brands around China, uh, maybe they have designers in their factory and the designers know a lot about carbon or they know a lot about engineering, but they don't really know a lot about bikes or riding or what cyclists want from the bike. So I'd say that's one of the strengths of Cybre. They design products that they themselves want to use and they themselves want to race. So it's usually an emphasis on performance and yeah, it shows through in their products. Now, the most popular Cybro product for the time being is their uh, crank sets. So they have carbon crank arms with an aluminum axle, which is the DUB standard. But super light, I think the official weight in 170 millimeters is like 320 grams. Uh, I've got the scales here, so we can have a look in a minute. And then you have the choice of either putting on a, an, an aluminum spider on there or putting like an XKD power meter or another power meter on there. The interface between cranks and power meter or cranks and spider is like the Eastern style interface so any eastern power meter you can install on the cranks but yeah on a bunch of my bikes i'm running the cybre crank arms with an xkd power meter and also that's kind of like a theme around shaman these days especially even in my office i think we've got five or six bikes uh, with the cybre cranks on uh, so i've got my 3t that i built up i've also got my tavello behind me we've got tom's super six and we've got Tom's Quota and got uh, James's Tavello as well. So, so yeah, we're all riding them day in, day out. And a lot, loads of the fast guys in Shaman are riding them. If you go to any race in Shaman, like uh, the guys at the front end are usually using uh, Cybre crank arms. But anyway, let's have a look at the crank arms. So this is the, the box of the crank arms. Uh, so when I saw this box originally, I thought it looked like a tooth whitening kit or something. Like the colors are a bit funky and out there, not, not very bike industry-ish, but... Uh, it's better than just a black box with a white logo, which is what everyone does these days. Uh, I think I kind of started that trend, but uh, now everyone does it, and yeah, uh, I'm sick of it. So, cool, whatever, it's different. But the best thing about this when you open it up is... <gasps> We get a user manual. How cool is that? Uh, you guys know if you buy Chinese stuff, there's hardly ever a user manual. Uh, so it's great to have, we've got in here a, a dual language user manual, which tells you, you know, where to put grease, how much torque to put on stuff, the installation order, measuring, how to check if it's compatible, all that stuff. So, wow, kudos to Cybre for making, you know, something that everyone should make, but seemingly doesn't. Then once we get into the packaging, we've got the crank arms themselves. So let me take out this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm, 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 mm. 
Yeah, so shiny, glossy finish on the crank arms. You can see the carbon shining through nicely. On here, you've got attached is all of your spacers and washers and stuff. So the drive side one is just the crank arm and the non-drive side one has the axle on it as well, along with the preload collar. So in the combination of the preload collar and the little spacers you put in there, you can kind of get it working on any, any frame setup you might have. Like I say, it's DUB standard and then Eastern standard for the interface between the crank arms and the spider. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, give it a quick throw on the scales to see if their claim 320 grams is right. And like I say, I've still got the plastic on here and uh, some spacers and washers and stuff. I'd say it's probably weighs like five grams or whatever. So let's take a look. Okay, yeah, 325 grams. So take off five grams for the uh, spacers and exactly 320 grams as advertised. Uh, what length are these ones? Let's have a look. Yeah, these are the 170 mil ones. So boom, right on spec. That's good to see. Of course, your crank arms aren't going to get you very far if you don't have chain rings on them. And Cybre also have a nice range of chain rings. So basically, they have two main lines, the alloy line and the carbon line. Uh, here, I've got the alloy line in my hand. So this is actually the slightly updated version of the alloy chain rings where you can see a lot of the CNCing has gone into it. Whereas the old version is more of this flat kind of boring finish. Uh, specs wise, they're basically the same. I think this one has slightly more rigidity, but it's much of a muchness. But anyway, so this is the alloy version of the chain rings. Uh, the chain rings come in three different sizes. There's a 5034, a 5236, or a 5438 for the big boys. Uh, all my bikes are running the 5034s, so I'm a wimp. Uh, but as well as the alloy series, they also have the carbon series. Now, in fact, uh, the carbon series, I think, works out to about $100 more than the alloy series, but the weight is pretty much the same. Uh, so I think Cybre claim the stiffness of the carbon version is slightly higher, but I think at the end of the day, you're paying the $100 just for the extra bling bling to say you've got carbon chain rings. Uh, hey, that's no problem. Like I've got the carbon versions on my 3T, but I've got the alloy version on the Tavello. So it is what it is. Choose which one you want, either save the money or go for the bling. The carbon version itself, the actual teeth aren't carbon. So it's like a carbon plate with an alloy teeth on there, which means obviously they're gonna last longer. You get some carbon chain rings where the teeth themselves are carbon, but then that's not gonna last too long, right? Uh, shifting on both, I think I talked about this in my sub six for six part two video a few days ago, yesterday. Sorry, all the days are rolling into one. Yeah, the shifting is great. Uh, so it shifts over time, no drop chains. Every so often you get one shift that sounds a bit crunchy, but like it happens, like it still shifts, so no biggie. So not quite like Jura Ace levels of silky smooth shifting, but shifts fine. Okay, let's put the alloy version onto the scales of truth. So this is, what size are we on this one? So this is a 5236, let's have a look. 123.5 grams for the big and together with the small, we've got 154 grams. So 154 grams for a pair of chain rings, not bad indeed. Yeah, so the crank arms, they come in a bunch of lengths. I think the shortest is 162.5 and the longest is 175. Like I said, for weight, we're talking 320 grams for the 170 mil version for just the crank arms with the axle. If you add on the chain rings and add on the alloy spider, it comes to 464 grams. So 464 grams for a crank set without a power meter that you can put on your bike. Basically what I put on the Tavello here. And for a comparison, if you don't have any sort of context, 464 grams for that setup, a Jura A setup is 685 grams. So more than 200 grams saving over Jura Ace, which is, yeah, mind blowing. Uh, Ultegra is 720 grams. So like getting on towards 300 grams saving over Ultegra. Uh, SRAM Red, obviously they're carbon cranks. So it's more of a like for like comparison. I think a SRAM Red uh, chain set is 561 grams. So you're about 100 grams lighter than a SRAM Red crank set. So not bad at all. And then if you want to compare it to like a THM Clavicular SE, now they don't come with chain rings, so it's not exactly much for much comparison, but a THM Clavicular SE with just the crank arms and the spider is like 302 grams. So you're talking about 40-ish grams if you take the spider into your account too. 40-ish grams lighter, the THM, uh, but the THM re retails for $1,500. So three times the price for 30 grams. Obviously, there's a scale in cycling and you get diminishing returns towards the end where you pay more just to get a little bit lighter. Uh, but I think for me, 
especially as I've got so many bikes I need to put these on, uh, the Cybre is a very happy like price to performance ratio. But I don't think we can talk about Chinese carbon and crank arms without talking about the Sky Pivot from Incolor. I also sell those on Panda Podium, so I'm not really biased because I sell both. Now, I think the Sky Pivot claimed to be like five or 10 grams lighter than Cybre, but whenever I weigh the Sky Pivots myself, they come out about five or 10 grams heavier than the Cybre. And I've got that listed on my website because, you know, uh, I like to talk about actual weights as opposed to claimed manufacturer's weights. Uh, but the crank arms, uh, the sky pivot is cheaper. I think it's like 60 or $80 cheaper or something. But then the chain rings, the Cybre is cheaper. So if you add them all together, it comes out more or less the same. I think it works out that the sky pivot is still like 10 or $20 cheaper. So yeah, it might be a matter of which one do you think looks nicer or whatever. I have one of the older generation of the sky pivots on my climbing bike, uh, but I don't actually have one of the new ones yet. I'm gonna have to get one of those in for testing. So stay tuned for that, but yeah. Those two, when you take everything into account, into account uh, come to about more or less the same price. As well as crank sets, uh, Cybre also make bottom brackets, which is ideal because, hey, you know, their uh, crank sets are DUB standard, so they make a bunch of DUB bottom brackets. And they've got options for pretty much every frame out there, BB86, BB30, BSA, uh, I think there's T47, I'm not sure. The bottom brackets are super decent. I've been running them on like uh, three of my bikes now. Uh, I don't think they're like Hambini levels of like machining expertise, but obviously, you pay what you get for, they're a lot more affordable option. The design of the bottom bracket is like a screw screwdriver interface, but some of them, like for example, a BB86 version, the threads don't actually touch each other unless you start to press the cups into the frame. So like, you can't just use the threads to pull the cups into the frame. You have to like press the cups into the frame a little bit first before they start threading together. It's a bit weird, uh, but I talked to them about it and they said the threading is actually more just to guarantee that the whole thing's straight and add some rigidity and not necessarily to help you with installation. So, uh, yeah, but at least on all the bikes I've got mine on so far, uh, running silent. Uh, I mentioned it in the Tavello video yesterday uh, that this bike runs super silent, and again, there's a Cybre bottom bracket in there too. As well as all this stuff, they also make some small uh, different accessories. They also make bottle cages, so I've got them on this bike behind me. Yeah, these bottle cages are not cheap. They're like $50 each, but I think they weigh like 14 grams. You can tell that the Cybre guys actually ride bikes because lots of these super light bottle cages you see out there, like you can't use them, yeah? Especially for a race or especially, you know, for getting in and out bottles quickly. These, they hug the bottles tight enough. They're not going to lose a bottle in a race or anything, but at the same time, you'd have to, yeah, Yank the bottles out of the cage. So yeah, again, just another tip that shows that the guys making this stuff know what they're doing. But yeah, today's video, just to kind of introduce you to the Cybre line, show you some of their products, talk a bit about uh, them, and maybe I'll get them in for a chat one day. I just dropped a video with me talking with Cirque behind the brand. So maybe I'll do a behind the brand with Cybre and you guys can get to know them a bit more too. I'm going to be working more with their team next year as well. A big announcement on that coming soon. That's going to be really cool. Uh, but yeah, just check it out in the link down below, uh, all the Cybre stuff. Any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, as always, China Cycling out.